Hi, welcome to Holy Habitus. I'm Phil, and this week we're going to be pushing into the Beatitudes, those eight blessings that Jesus lists out at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and they start and end, the first and the last Beatitude, with the words, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. These are blessings for those to whom the kingdom is to be given. So we need to pay close attention to them. And I think there's uh, four blessings in and four blessings out. Uh, the first four, I think, have to do with those who have an inner lack or need or emptiness that causes them to draw on the resources of God um, in a way they wouldn't if they didn't have that inner vacuum. That vacuum inside causes them to <gasps> gasp in God and be filled with his breath, his life, his spirit. And the last four have to do with breathing out the life of God into the world. Blessed are the peacemakers, those who show mercy, etc. Those who engage or... Um, act as agents of kingdom transformation and the blessing of God rests on them as well. So the first four blessings for the breathless and then the last four blessings for the God breathers. Uh, the first four start with that beatitude which we'll look at today. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And that resonates quite well with what I've been saying because spirit could be translated from the Greek also as wind or breath. Blessed are the breathless. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now what does poor in spirit mean? Because I don't think it can mean poor in the Holy Spirit because if you're rich in the Holy Spirit then you are blessed indeed. I think it must mean poor in the human spirit. Blessed are those who in their inner life are, know their own poverty. There's a wonderful paraphrase of these verses. Blessed are those who know their need of God, who are inwardly poor and that causes them to draw on the resources of God in a way that those who are rich and snug and smug in their spiritual life don't or can't draw on the resources of God. Jesus tells a parable doesn't he of the Pharisee in the uh, uh, in the temple who prays to God and says uh, thank you Lord that I fast twice a week and I give away a tenth of all I earn thank you that I'm not like that loser over there um, and the loser over there is praying and can't even look up to heaven he's so ashamed of his sin and he beats on his breast and says woe is me I'm a sinner have mercy on me God and and Jesus says, that guy who goes away justified, the loser, the one who knows his need of God, the one who is inwardly poor, he's the one, not the spiritual religious guy, but the poor man. And that's why Jesus drew to himself all these followers who were, who were poor in religious and spiritual terms, but who were so hungry for the message that Jesus gave, hungry for the Holy Spirit and the kingdom. So my question to you this week is how can we acknowledge our poverty of spirit before God? How can we cultivate that inner vacuum that causes us to draw on the resources of God this week? I'd love to hear your comments about what that might mean practically.